Hi everyone! I have a new look today, as you can see. But for those who've already watched my previous video, you already know this new character. This is my MetaHuman. And at the moment, I'm using the MetaHuman Animator, a new facial animation technology from Epic Games. In this video, I'll tell you a bit about it, and also, as I promised in my previous video, I'll tell you about my new DIY facial capture helmet. If you want to watch the full video, you can find it on my channel or click this link. I'm actually still very impressed with this facial animation technology so far. And it's very easy to use, by the way. But the only condition is that you need to have an iPhone or iPad. The iPhone starting something like with the iPhone 10, but Epic Games recommends that you use the iPhone 12 or above. You can still use an iPhone 10 or 11. For, for this video I use the iPhone 11. The downside of using these two models is that they might not have enough power to record video for a long period of time. But I solve this issue by reducing the frame rate to 30 frames per second instead of 60 in the app. As for the app, you need to download Live Link Face. It's free. You turn it on, select MetaHuman Animator and start recording by tapping the red button to capture your face. This isn't a tutorial on how to use MetaHuman Animator, it's just a quick overview of how it works. It's very easy to find tutorials on it, so in general anyone can quickly pick it up. So, how MetaHuman Animator work? The app uses a 3D camera built into an iPhone or iPad to record the shape of your face. All of this is then transferred into Unreal. And thanks to this 3D scan, Unreal is able to read the smallest movements of your face. So it determines which MetaHuman Animation sliders need to be moved to reproduce the same expressions that you have on your face. In a way, it's trying to copy your emotions and your speech. At the moment, in my opinion, this is the best and also the free solution for face capture and face animation. And now I quickly cover my project that I announced a few months ago. A short film based on The Last of Us. If you watch that video, I said then that I was going to do this short film because I discovered the coolest facial animation technology. Back then, MetaHuman Animator didn't exist. I found the technology from a company called Facegood and thought it was a fantastic solution. But weeks later, Epic Games announced MetaHuman Animator. And I was bummed, because I already recorded some scenes. Yeah, I even posted a video about it. And I couldn't decide if I should continue using that face good technology or if I should scrap everything I've done on Last of Us and start over with MetaHuman Animator. And once I tried MetaHuman Animator, I realized that it was much more advanced than anything else I had ever tried. And of course, I wanted my short film to look better, so I switched to MetaHuman Animator. So the short film is going to be delayed for a while, yeah. And now let's talk about what I think is the most interesting part. My new facial capture helmet. Some of you probably already saw in this little screen in my last video that I'm walking around with this new helmet. And yeah, it's a DIY helmet, I modeled it in Blender and I 3D printed it using my new Anycubic Neo 3D printer. And right now it's my favorite technology in my home. And using this 3D printer I made myself this camera mount. It's specifically designed for the iPhone 11. This part holds the phone and I also printed this counterweight. Well, first of all, before I printed all of this, I scanned my face using my iPad. And this is what came out. Yeah, looks funny, but it was enough for me to just take the measurements I needed. And also I scanned the helmet separately. You can see the helmet is a separate object. So I modeled this mount and measured the distance of the phone from my face. For the phone case, I found the free model on Thingverse. And the counterweight I modeled myself, this is how it fits. 
I put my old power bank in here. I don't use it anymore. And also I have these little disc shaped weights from my camera stabilizer. You put it in like this and it's done. Well, it's just like the model in Blender. From my previous helmet here, as you can see, there are these black parts left. This is the actual GoPro adapter. So I didn't have to model and print it. And also I didn't have to print this part that I glued on the helmet. So it all fits together. Let me put this helmet on. And here's a comparison to what's in Blender. In general, I think it's the most satisfying thing when you model all of this in a 3D program and then you get one-to-one -one result through a 3D printer. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very satisfying process. And most importantly, it all works. As you can see, I used this whole setup in my last video and everything worked as it should. And most importantly, I saved a lot of money on all of this. So yeah, I'm actually so happy about my new helmet and my 3D printer. And that's it. So expect from me all kinds of videos with CG people, CG body movements and CG facial expressions. And if you're interested in all of this, then subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye everyone.